I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. The y'all are in camouflage, so that must mean something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we went tail hunting this morning. Old Jay's struck. We weren't empty handed. We got him. You got him. Because they, uh, they killed a few yesterday for a church. Well, they did. It, this is the first time since I was about eight years old that I missed opening day of teal season. So the government tried something new this year. Which we argued about because somebody said teal season was over on Friday, and all of us said no. That's never, oh, I said That's no. never happened. It's not. I said, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, oh, no, that's what it says. And I didn't look it up. I Nobody said, looked I it up. We all just said, no, it starts on Sunday. I mean, a Saturday and goes to the following Sunday. That's the first time in 40 years they've done that. <laughs> well, that's the first time they've ever done that. <laughs> or ever done that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they hadn't. That can only go back 40 years now, Judge. That's his limit. Well, I think I said this first time I missed opening the till season. But I had to film, and it was a 12-hour day that was – mapped out and i thought you know if i go teal hunting and then go film for 12 hours i'm gonna be tired and so i just wasn't convinced since it's really dry in louisiana and we have very little water and zero food i said i don't think it's gonna happen and it didn't so they didn't fire a shot on opening day so i thought okay so why would i come the next day which was a saturday because i had another 12 hour day and we were getting our little one that we're kind of the, I guess, godparents of at this stage. So the one that we kept when he was a baby, we were getting him for the weekend. And I was like, filming, I, we have the baby. They didn't fire a shot, so I didn't go Saturday. Got it right again. They didn't fire a shot. So then I was off on Sunday. Because there's always the FOMO. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. It's the strongest motivation for a lot of reasons. <laughs> so then now Sunday I'm off, but we still have the little one. You know, we're going to go to church, and I thought I could go, because Teal only fly, for the most part, up until 8 in the morning. So it's a perfect system. You you can go hunt till 7.30. You're not going to miss anything. Yep. And then meet with the brothers. But I just said, they didn't get them the first two days. Oh. This is the year they never came. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. It was a flight day. So today's Monday that we're filming this. So yesterday, they got them. And Dad, you yeah. were teaching, so you didn't go. Failing. He missed it. He missed it. Now, the only thing worse than what I did, my missing Sunday, is what Phil did. Phil did hunt the first two days, two goose eggs. Then the day they came, he missed I didn't miss because I was busy. Well, you had a good reason. I'm not. <laughs> you were teaching a class that's an hour earlier than the church service. So, so he had a good excuse. Yeah, I'm not. But blaming did you still you. did it hurt a little that you didn't go and then try it and get in or no? no. So you're you're beyond FOMO. No. You don't well, have. Well, said it didn't bother me, but you know if they want to go shoot the devil's ducks, they can they're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the thing was, preach the gospel on good Sunday morning. You might see people from, and I looked up, and one guy was all the way from the Middle East. Yeah, he was and from he Iran. Did, he, he, did, he did respond to the gospel. So, so the man was from Iran. Um, I, I heard the story. I didn't meet him yesterday. Did he come with Larry Bowles? He didn't. Oh. But but I think they met. Uh, so uh, Larry's here today. We're going to get him on a little bit. We've also got a young couple here that was there yesterday, Seth and. Kathleen, his wife, have, and a baby. We have a studio audience. We yeah, I think this is the first time we actually had the first a baby, baby a in the house. From Wyoming, I, I, uh, they, they said I told them about your visit. Yep, and they were how impressed that y'all were at being over out there. And, it's beautiful. Yeah. So you were doing that, so you missed out. Uh, Stone told me he was on the hunt, but he had a couple of young bucks that hadn't hunted a lot and so one of them tried to put 20 gauge shells in a 12 gauge gun which mm. doesn't work well basically you create a bomb <laughs> I mean, yeah not in a good your idea. Line. so they were it, that but could not, have been bad yeah, so we, bad. we were would fortunate have been eyeballing those two very well he had a stern talk afterwards um probably one he should have had prior but 
yeah about gun safety and but they did really well we, we well. missed the flight day so we went back today because they came yesterday and uh because there's usually some leftovers but there was only one so i will prepare and eat that duck tonight <laughs> everybody else is out you know <laughs> one little green wing yeah the best by the way uh zach's here zach so today for the listener is the 25th of september so that means three days from the movie releasing which we're getting three close days. yeah so so tell folks what they need to do it's a little we're on movie watch scary. now We've been, yeah i've been working on this for man i guess two and a half years now <coughs> so yeah we uh, come out three days i'd say get your tickets now um I was just looking, you know, the the big Taylor Swift. I know you guys are big Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> Did y'all, y'all probably went to well, the concert. Well, Zach, I'm not really keeping up with the Taylor Swift <laughs> uh, goings and comings, but I'm glad you are. Yeah, well, what does I, Taylor I Swift with... have to do with any of this? <laughs> this is the oh, first time was... she's ever been mentioned. Is she in the, the movie podcast. She's it's, not. Does she movie. do a cameo? No. Did we use one of her so songs? Taylor is a woman. I thought it was a man. <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> old Taylor, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, no, she's I, keep, got... I keep up with all that stuff going uh, on. Taylor <laughs> Swift, Dad said, who's he? Yeah. <laughs> well, she did the concert thing that just blew up. Well, now they're taking the concert, and they've turned it into a movie, but her fans are so rabid that two weeks after our film, they've basically kicked every other film out except for this. I mean, it, she'll be on every screen in every theater in America – so if you want to watch The Blind, you probably have about a two-week window. I'd get your tickets now because <laughs> it's going to be uh, – We're up against be, uh, Taylor Swift. That's not who you want to yeah. be up against these days. Yeah. So, But, but, it, but yeah, it comes out. You can go get your – I say get your tickets now. You can go to theblindmovie.com. And so there's uh, a, a sense your, of urgency now. Sense, sense of urgency. Yeah, we got a sense of urgency. Um, you know, and, uh, get, get out there. Get them while, while you can. Um, probably today is a good day to do it. Uh, you can put in your um, – location and it'll take you to, to all the theaters in your location if you go to the blindmovie.com so check us out um and then we'd love to hear on social media what you think about the movie go to rotten tomatoes tell us what you think vote do all that stuff all the stuff that uh to, to get the message out <laughs> i'm more concerned about the rotten tomatoes than i am taylor swill what, what is that what yeah, explain that zach because that's that sounds bad every time i've been rotten around tomatoes. rotten tomatoes that's been a bad experience <laughs> I, I would i <laughs> am on fly hold on hold on let me get on the edge of my seat <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes for twenty, Alex, and report it. Report in. I, I want to know how to do that. That's why th this podcast is difficult. You know, I'm trying to promote stuff, and uh, y'all make it. Y'all make it interesting. I'll say in that. In your um, promotion, you brought up Taylor Swift and Rotten Tomatoes, and, rotten and you tomatoes. just drop so it rotten, like, okay, yeah, yeah go so do your Rotten, rotten tomatoes. tomatoes. They're a website that that it, it, they rate movies, and it's kind of a place where people. So it's a good. Um, advertisement people go to rotten tomatoes to read the read now, typically um, you know people like us are probably not going to get the best reviews from <laughs> industry people okay so there is that but um but that's why when you know the audience showing up the audience score is is what we're concerned about is the audience I mean, so the who, rotten that, tomatoes score is from people that have seen something so that's why it's important so they yeah. said let's name a movie critic Website. Database, yeah, website, Rotten Tomatoes, and it actually. I worked. think it may come from the old. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm just. I just just came to me. You know how they they throw tomatoes and like old, old bad fruit in the old medieval yeah. days. Okay. Yeah. If you, if the show wasn't good, then you get then they throw stuff at you. It's kind but of it's kind of people. opposite because I'm assuming if you get a high score on Rotten Tomatoes, that's good. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you want you a actually high score. want Rotten Tomatoes. So I that, will tell you this though. I will tell you this though that uh, uh, Ben Stewart, who's a very well-known pastor up in D.C., uh, we sent him a screener, and someone sent me a little video of him preaching yesterday, and he talked about the blind and and just what a. I mean, he went on and on about how, um, really how brave Phil was to put his story out there. He said, you know, they could have made this movie about anything. They could have made it about his success in the duck call business. They could have made this movie about you know, uh, the fame that was achieved during Duck Dynasty. He said, I mean, he was blown away. He said, but they made this film about the hardest parts of Phil and Kay's life. 
but on the other side of that is this incredible story of redemption. And, and he, I mean, he just raved about it. And everyone that's seen it so far has just been like brought to tears at how the, just the transformative power of Jesus as displayed in Phil and Kay's life. So, I mean, this really is a movie of, of hope. I think you guys are going to absolutely love it. I mean, we, it, it, it really turned out amazing. It's not duck dynasty. So if you think you're going to a, a, a duck dynasty show, it's not that, I mean, let me just tell you right now, it's not that this is a raw, real story. Um, and there's some humor in it, but it's, that's not, this is, this is a hard film to watch in some regard, but it's also, you know, hopeful. And well, that's pretty I'll give much you a little, I'll give you a little shot here. Therefore, if, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, which is kind of what this movie's about. It's exactly what the movie's about. The new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. So That's I had good. many, and the movie shows a lot of them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation was at the heart of what this show was about. They're fixing to see the blind and everything that went on there. So we implore you on Christ's behalf, trying to, through this movie, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. What, what, a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a statement. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. That's sort of what the, the guts and the nuts and bolts of the movie they'll see with me and why I said it's kind of embarrassing, but you know what? If we win one, that's one more than yeah. we had. Go no, that's, that's very well said. That When I first went to Dad to talk about the movie, Zach, when you guys were contemplating, the I thought something similar, except I used the it's book. It's not the kind of information where one will hear about a movie about himself that he'll be jumping up and down and said, oh, yay, look at me. No. <laughs> it's like <laughs> if you can look, look if you can stay no. with it till, till the end, it's not a, you'll find out there not is a, a way it's out. It's not a look how great I am. I compared it to the book of Romans. I told Dad, I said, Dad, Romans 4 through the end of the book would not be near as beautiful if you didn't read Romans 1 through 3. Yep, and yeah. so that really is, to me, the point of the film, is we can appreciate the goodness and greatness of God when we see the ugliness of who we are. And that's not just Dad, that's any of us, because uh, we're all sinners. Yeah, that's, so. that's, that's the, uh, when, we, when I made, uh, made the decision to kind of like press into the fall, it was because, you know, there's a biblical arc in, in, in pretty much the whole Bible of creation. I, mean, I may have said this before in the podcast, it's creation, fall, redemption and restoration and you can also add to that glorification one day but but it's this idea that 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 God created everything and it was it was very good creation yep. fall man fell genesis 3 um uh, redemption god paved the way through jesus and then restoration god is is progressively restoring us back to our original position in the garden and i think one of the areas in film particularly in christian film that I would love, I always wanted to see more of is, is we kind of try to whitewash the fall. We try to make it palatable. And, you know, this film is not that. We really wanted to, sh not in a glorific glorifying way, wanted to show, you know, what sin really looks like, yeah, the what, reality. What, what pain, yeah, what it looks like. And I think, I think we were able to accomplish that. And that way, when you see that, like you said, Romans 3, you read Romans 3, then all of a sudden Romans 5 is a whole lot more. That's exactly means, right. means a whole lot more when while we were enemies, Christ died for the ungodly, understanding what that means in, in Romans 3, that all of sin falls short of God's glory. So, yeah, that's a great point, Al. That's what we tried to accomplish. If in the one film. could ever grasp because by one sacrifice when Jesus died on a cross, by one sacrifice, that one, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Love it. Hebrews 10. Hebrews In the 10. spirit of Larry Bowles, we're 
over on our one. <laughs> That's segment. right. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break. We got LB in the house. He's chomping at the bits over here. He's had a big retreat this weekend. He got spider bed. He's got all kinds of stories. So uh-huh. we're gonna take a break. We're gonna bring in Larry and set him up, and uh, and we'll go from there. We'll see you on the other side. So teal season has arrived. It's arrived. Which means uh, we're back in the blind. I discharged my weapon once this morning. Was it the only discharge of the morning? Yes, and it was successful. Uh, there you go. Well, we had a uh, Stone was telling us a story of a little bit of an incident with some young hunters that he took um, because they didn't quite understand some issues about you got certain gauges that will hold only you can only shoot the gauge of your. Uh, well, right now, if hunting season ends, I'm batting or shooting one thousand <laughs> percent. Which is pretty good. You did that in the major leagues. You would own. But, th- but then they always have minimum. You got to have a little. You got to have a little more. But then yeah. you did one. one for one. Now, by the way, was that a green wing teal or green wing teal? The reason I'm talking about how my shotgun functioned because we're doing an ad for a little company called Barrel Buddy. That's right. Which yeah. keeps your gun clean. So. Which is the most, it, you know, for safety, but also for efficiency and effectiveness. And so uh, these guys at Barrel Buddy, a uh, great company, great Christian guys uh, that we love, they were sitting out in a muddy field and said, we need something, a better way to clean our gun. So they came up with these white polymers, um, which are excellent. They got them for every gauge, every pistol, every rifle. So whatever you're shooting, uh, they've got a better way to clean it, to scrub it, to get all the particulates out of your barrel. Um, so check these guys out, uh, tis the season, as they say, for Barrel Buddy, B-A-R-R-E-L Buddy.com, Barrel Buddy.com. Check them out. So welcome back. We have uh, LB in the house. Hey, how, how are you? So always the Oklahoma wind is oh, yeah. blowing you right in. It is. It's Yeah, that's one thing we got there. So <laughs> Plenty of wind. You're out of the country. Well, I mean, sometimes. But, oh, yeah. I'm here now. So I'm you're not, heading. I'm, uh, I'm not a holographic image. You head out right next now. week, or are you going back to back over yeah, next week? Yeah. yeah. Just as a reminder, because I, I like to mention this, Larry's a regular on here, and most of you know him and love him, uh, like we do. But he does an amazing work. Uh, it's acrocenter.org mm-hmm. is uh, where you can find out about his work. But in um, in Athens, and especially. Um, refugees that come from the Middle East, that, that's where a lot of them It's kind of the epicenter of what right. they call the refugee highway. So, And yeah. a lot of people have asked about you, Larry, so, uh, and we've talked about it before, you're a retired firefighter. Mm-hmm. It's not like you're a like, trained I'm a, preacher. I'm a anyway, right? common, and, common... In fact, it, your wife says, don't call you a yeah, preacher. Yeah, exactly. That's, I can't do that. So, yeah. <laughs> Although it's kind of like with Dad. It's like, uh, okay, you could say you're not, but let's face it, Larry, yeah. you're a pretty good preacher. So. <laughs> I actually went with Larry uh, to Athens. What? We were there a couple weeks, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, you were there five days. Five it days. may have seemed like two weeks to you, but it no, was No, but five. that's, you he just could, he nailed could it. Find, that's, that's Jay's five days is two weeks. He that's could the not find iced tea anywhere, no, and he couldn't. thought he was going to die, and I took him aside. I said, yeah. Jace, you're, you're going to be okay. You're here for five days. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. And well, he finally found some iced tea. I found some iced tea, yeah. and I actually, Larry's <laughs> been going over there for a decade, and it took me to find find a place that you could actually eat and enjoy yourself oh my. and it was fantastic <laughs> yeah. was it not oh, it was. It we got to get fish. out of this city yeah. what you what do you mean you found <laughs> well i <laughs> put my people on it i said i think i drove you there yeah think about after three days i said i either gonna have to fast for the rest of it or we're gonna have to find somewhere else to eat yeah but we he, but, he he got he got a fish and the guy came out and laid this fish out and Lifted that gill, and that's what that's what that's what him. impressed me. It was like a glitter finish like. on a bass boat. He was just like <laughs> when we were on. They found I, I was wanting to get out of the city, and that we found a beach that had a restaurant, and it was very expensive. I think that's why they hadn't been there before. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you know, and I'm buying if it I It wasn't really a missionary no, place. It, one, one kingdom was buying. He's like, yeah, I'll take that I one. I was right like, there. whatever we got to do. <laughs> and so this, the guy, I was like, what, where's the menu? And he brought out, like he said, a, just a, I think it's like a piece of wood. And he had, he had three fish on mm-hmm. there. 
And Which is one thing I like about it over there. They they'll show you. They give you the preview of yeah. what you're going. They're yeah, going to they cook do. for you. I enjoyed the ferry mm. when we went. Every yeah. every place. Well, there you go. Was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there you go. There's a difference in garbage disposal humans when it comes to food. Oh, and people oh, that have man. a palate for a reason. He's a man. Well, Zach, I think that was aimed at you. Discerning yeah, taste, Jay said. Let me. So. Uh, what garbage did you think? Was disposal good? palate. Do you also uh, eat? Was... Do you also eat at potlucks on the sunny potluck? Are you first in line? No, I'm not first in line. I yeah. will do it to be nice. Well, I'm I'll not eat there. The stuff that I you, brought. I eat potato. the stuff that I brought, and then that's 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 how we. If that's, I know you and I know you can cook, I'll put it. I'll I'll, I'll put it on my plate. That's, well, Paul, well, Paul said to eat what is put in front of you. Don't raise he questions. Did say that. Well, Thank Taylor you, Swift no, no. said she she wrote a song about potlucks. The name of it is "Why You Got to Be So Mean." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're having a Man. Taylor Swift yeah. theme today. Yeah. Well, Taylor, oh, no, no really ketchup, no ketchup in this. That's what they're going to write up as the tagline is. for this podcast. Taylor Swift is the only oh. Taylor Swift song that I ever heard that I liked. I thought that was pretty creative. It was not talking about potlucks, but I. I Took some uh, liberties there. Uh, Maddie, will you reach out and see if you can get Taylor Swift to be on our podcast? We want her as a guest now. So. I met Taylor Swift. Has anybody else here met her? You met her? I met and sat right beside her and had a conversation. Wow. Now, I'd love to tell you what we talked about, but I really wasn't following her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Where, where, were, where were you at? When did I this was happen? at uh, some kind of award show. And Is that uh, back when you did that, the CMAs back in the day? Probably. It wasn't. It wasn't that one. Uh, she used to be a country singer. Well, what's weird is you know I was with my wife, and they had it was it was country artists there because I met a lot of uh, country music singers that night. Uh, got invited to go deer hunt with uh, who's the one that invited me to go deer hunt? The one that says I like my chicken fried on uh, Zach, um, Zach Zach Brown. Brown? Zach Brown. Brown. Yeah, met Brown. him. Is he the one that just got in trouble? Is that him? No, that's Zach. Uh, Zach somebody. Okay. Brian. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm sitting there, and we had a break, and everybody's meeting all the fans. Well, you know, I, I met them, so I'm just sitting there. Hmm. And I looked up, and it's just me and Taylor Swift <laughs> sitting there. And we just... Started having a conversation, you know, and we talked. And I met her parents. They came up. Yeah. She had some of her other family there. So this was before she was like a mega. I think she was so. a star. I think, you know, yeah. It's for she, it all she, like it is now. It was back when she was. Trust singing. me, there would never be a scenario now where you were sitting somewhere and it was just you and Taylor Swift. It was me and Taylor Swift. That's Taylor's never going to happen again. That yeah. ship has sailed. <laughs> that ship has sailed. <laughs> There's going to be some beefy people between you and Taylor yeah, Swift. Yeah, this now. is probably before she became the megastar because when we went backstage, Missy's like, well, who was that, who was that singer you were talking to? And I couldn't remember her name. <laughs> This, this and, reminds uh, me a little bit about you know, when, you know, this WFR men's retreat that we just had a year ago, there's this truck driver and his name's Richie. And, uh, I was, happened to be preaching and he had listened to this podcast and he's driving down I-20 and he's like, it's a Sunday morning. He's like, something made me just turn the wheel. And he went down and he's like, if there's a place to park, I'm going to park and go in and, and, and hear this. So he did, and he comes over, and there's a park across the you know street there. Yep. And he parks, and comes in, listens. I finish preaching. He comes down. He gets baptized, and so we've been kind of hooked up for a year. And so when I found out about this retreat, I I'd, I'd never been to one. I didn't know anything about it, but I told him about it. Well, he's trying to get his schedule together and all that, and so he calls WFR and tries to get in and talks to somebody there and. Uh, <laughs> He, he just as I'm telling you this, just the level of influence this podcast has across this nation. So he's driving, you know, incessantly up and down the road, listening to every word. Um, and he, he, he calls in and he said, well, you know, I don't know if there's room. It's kind of already filled up. And he's, and, and they told him the women's retreat sold out in like eight minutes. And he's like, he calls me. He's like, is this kind of like a Taylor Swift concert? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it, it, fortunately he got in and it was a great weekend. So he was there. Yeah. Was there it was fantastic. By the way, I'll tell you a funny story. When she asked me, uh, who I was singing for, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> 
because she just looked at me and made yeah. an yeah. assumption that yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm inside the ropes. You should have the... said Sons of the Pioneer. <laughs> no, yeah, or I, <laughs> you're, not, you're not Billy Gibbons, are you? Yeah, you know, or something like that. I so, thought you know. she was being sarcastic because you know, I mean, there was a little show, you know, <laughs> but you know, with ducks. I mean, we're not Taylor Swift, but I mean, we we did have a show. So I actually said, "No, I'm in the band," and she's like, "Oh," I was, she's like, "What? What instrument do you play?" And I was like, "I play the duck call." Well, there you go. And she said, Crickets. "Excuse me." <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, "No, we're duck people." I said, yeah. "Yeah, we got we had a little show," and she was like, "Oh, that's that's neat." Yeah. So that was that. <laughs> Apparently she was not a big fan. You, you, start, <laughs> you started with the, you know, the wash. She was bu- busy building to the jug, neat. and now you've moved. She was to busy the building her mega star a, career. So I got a that's neat for all you Taylor Swift fans. That's I got awesome. a that's neat. What do they wow. call them, Zach? Is it that's Swifties? Neat. Swifties? Um, Swifters? I should know that. They have a name for it. Uh, uh, I'm not up on all my, but now that I know about rotten tomatoes, yeah. I, I feel like I mean I anything's like, better than rotten yeah. tomatoes. This has been one of the most in. Formative, nonsensical <laughs> conversations I've ever had. Larry, Larry just, came on for a good Bible discussion. Let's get to the Bible. It feels like we're wasting a lot of time. Hang on, hang on. Let's, <laughs> let's, before we do that, let's take a break. So one of our sponsors is a, a company called Fast Growing Trees, uh, and we like these guys. Typically, trees don't grow fast, right, Dan? I mean, they take a little little slower time for the woods. The, on the species. There you go. You planted some cypress that uh they're the cypress are getting pretty big now i noticed yeah, that they are. which but it takes those a long time what what uh, fast growing trees does is they make trees that you can grow uh in your yard sometimes as a, a barrier uh better than a fence is some beautiful trees uh we got uh lisa and i got some palm trees for our southern lair from these guys and they came they were in great shape uh, they were ready to go And, uh, you know, you can call these guys, you can get whatever information you need. We love that. And so uh, they have a 30-day alive and thrive guarantee, uh, which means that uh, you can trust everything will be healthy for years to come. Uh, It comes ready to roll. Listeners to our show, to Unashamed, are going to get 15% off your entire order when you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Robertson, but only through October 15th. So it's 15% off. At fastgrowingtrees.com slash Robertson, fastgrowingtrees.com slash Robertson. Check them out. All right, so Larry, one last thing before we get to a uh, Bible text. So you got bit by a spider. Uh, yeah, I, apparently. That's the first thing I heard was, yeah. so you, I saw you yesterday. I said, oh, there's Larry. He's preaching. Yeah. He looks like he's excited. Yeah. And so Kellett says, yeah, he got bit like 15 times by a spider. And I was like, how do you get bit more than once? I don't know. Was, but it, it was happened. this at the retreat? I, mean, I had like six on my neck, the back of my neck. Of course, the big one up here was was the worst one. But it, uh, yeah, it, it, after I got, this happened Thursday night, Friday morning, I get up and I thought, well, you know, not that big a deal. About four hours later, this thing had just blown up and it was marching, you know. And so I, I told them about it. And so they had... Uh, did somebody come out and give you a shot or... No, they, uh, she came out and looked at it. And we decided it probably wasn't a brown recluse, but we didn't know what it was. And so... The uh, fact you're still alive is... But yeah, it's I, I'm thinking, well, there's 120 guys at this camp. I'm the only guy that gets bit. And I'm like, well, amen. You know, I don't know. Well, the message doing, there is you're sleeping really well. I, apparently. Yeah. Apparently it and didn't, it, I mean, it didn't really hurt, but, um, uh, a Z pack and some, you know, uh, antibiotics and, and it was better, but I was thinking, you know, I'm preaching Sunday and then podcast Monday. And well, they were at a camp and he did tell me at Camp Shioka that his bunk mate was burly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when I heard that's that, it. I thought, well, that's where the spider comes. <laughs> what there's no telling that's what's what living in the beard and hair of yeah, one Dame Burley. But, but he's an RN, so he is a it, nurse. It was great. He was, you know, I was a paramedic. He's yeah. an RN, and so anyway, it was good was, to go. But yeah, it's uh, the the so, med- medicine really helped. I, I think eventually we make it to Luke 13. But I but I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to your, your sermon yesterday was so good. And by the way, you can find that wfrchurch.org. Um, it, when this comes out, by then it'll be up, and yeah. so you can go watch the whole thing. But you were from Luke nine, which we've already talked about the transfiguration. Mm-hmm. But it was just really, really rich and really, really good. And the idea 
that about transformation was what I found so powerful mm-hmm. about it. Of course, you were coming off a great weekend where yeah. a lot of people were transformed, no oh, doubt about it. Oh, my goodness. Well, they had a men's retreat. Men's retreat. Weekend. That yeah. they have in our community, and it's not just our church, it's any churches, and like men come from the community. Right. And, so, and we had a guy there from Canada. You yeah. Know? I mean, it was crazy. And FYI, if you want to listen to the sermon, carve out an hour. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> now look, I'm only saying that. Don't blame me because he has such a long oh, tail. I'm going to make you feel I like better, that, Larry. I'm going to make That's you feel better. So I have my first church event of the Our year. Hour. I, I suspended all church events for the year because I we're doing this podcast. I'm doing this show, and there's just not there was not enough days in the week. Right. But I could not say no to Hernando, Mississippi. Oh no, because that's right south of Memphis, and that's that's basically where our public ministry started. I yep. mean, we've told this story before, but the first outdoor show we did after the second duck video, when we went to Memphis, Tennessee at a Ducks Unlimited meeting, the, the people for the first time in all our trade show experiences gathered up yeah. before we got there. And so they've all, I've always felt like they've, that area has supported us. So I just couldn't say no. And I had about right at 600 men, and they had a man camp, kind of like what y'all did okay. this, this past weekend. So this was Wednesday night, This so just a few days ago. But it had been so long since I had spoken, and I got there, and just there was electricity in the room, and we kind of did the VIP meet and greet and i met a lot of these guys and some of them came there with heavy hearts and we had bible studies and prayers during the the meet and greet turned into just kind of a a spiritual strengthening and so i was all wound up and i looked down at my clock and i thought i'd gone about 40 minutes and i was like all right we got we got four more minutes and then when i Wrapped up, I realized that it had been another 24 minutes since I had said four minutes. Wow. So I went about an hour and five minutes, Man. So, which I think it was good. It was just way too long. Yeah. And so I, then when you got up yesterday. I went 45 minutes. 45. And, yeah, yeah. 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 Was it? Yeah. Okay. Go back and check. It. But in your defense, <laughs> they gave you not only the transfiguration but about three more paragraphs in Luke 9. So they gave me they assigned me 35 well, verses the context of which is in the first 27 or 62 verses in Luke 9. And so and when I come back in December and preach he's going to write me and say, "Okay, you got verse 36 on <laughs> yeah, this whatever it is. You get One verse. verse. So a minute and I and I'll preach 45 minutes on it. So I get it. You had a 10 minute introduction and you gave each verse a minute. That was pretty good. That's a good better yeah. way to look. Well, at it. and but to, and, and also, in a case like this, this is what they call return Sunday. So everybody's coming in. Mm-hmm. So other people speak a little bit about the retreat. And so it does pack yeah. a lot into yeah. a morning. But it, we were also trying to stay in our text in Luke, which you did a great job. I just I thought you dealt with the text exactly like you should have, fairly, but out of these atmosphere of Sunday morning as well as the weekend. Yeah. I just thought it fit so well. I thought, yeah, that was my thinking. I, yeah, I had was, to I had to write the sermon long before I got there because there's no right. time, it, but it just dovetailed it was, beautifully. It was very good. It was a couple yeah. of things I wanted to mention okay. uh, before we move to this other. Yeah, you got a page I, of notes. I saw you on yeah, the front I, I know, just, Did you see me taking notes yesterday? Uh-huh. I was so, like, this is not going to go well tomorrow. <laughs> Usually yeah. I ask them about it, anything controversial, but well, not or obscure. Obscure. Or, yeah. mm-hmm. So I loved it. I had never thought about the idea that they were sleepy from sorrow. Yeah. I thought it, that was really yeah, interesting. That's in Mark. Because uh, you had the case like in the in Gethsemane. Right. And so the idea there is you're thinking, well, you know, it's at late. Why, and, why can't these guys stay awake with well, you? Exactly. And so, yeah. But you brought up the point because you pointed the context prior that, you know, he had just told him about his death and what yeah. he was going to do. Yeah. And... But I thought about it even more so than you went into yesterday. That we talk about depression. You know, we talk about people mm-hmm. when they're depressed. What yeah. do they do? They sleep. Yeah. a lot because it's hard for them to face a, a broken heart. Will, yeah, will make you take a nap. It it really will. It's just uh, it's a uh, it, you just shut down. Yeah, you know? Well, I take a nap every day, so well, I need some counseling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a lot going on. So yeah. well, it may only be ten minutes, yeah. but and you never, you guys have been through some rough spots here lately. Every, so. Yeah, we have. Need ever since that Taylor Swift discussion he's had, he just he's he, not sure. He how he may, can, he, right now. 
Somebody's wanting to go take a nap. There's a <laughs> couch know, over there. Then I can live with himself. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a little break. So I thought that was really interesting. I thought that was, I made some notes about that for future looking, especially because there's so many people that suffer in sorrow and depression yeah, uh-huh. and from difficulty. And so I thought that was really good about how we get woke up. And then the other ones, you, you talked about the word metamorphosis. Mm-hmm. Uh, t- tell a little bit about that, the the background of that word yeah. and how that, the other places you used it, which I thought was really powerful. Yeah, it, it only appears four times uh, in the New Testament uh, in in two texts on this transfiguration and it's it's two Greek words. Uh, metamorpheo uh, is the word, and and so it's uh, morphe, uh, meaning form, uh, and or yeah, or, or body, and then meta, meaning change. And so his form is changed, and so it's used twice to apply to that. What the what was happening on that Mount of Transfiguration, and then it's the other two times it's applied to us yeah. that we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Same same verb describing the same thing. Yeah, and then Paul uses it in Second Corinthians talking about as we gaze into the face of Christ and behold His glory, we are transformed into His likeness from one level of glory to another. Yeah. And so my, my point is, is that can, can people see Jesus living in you? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because Jesus talks about salt and light in a city on a hill that can't be hidden. And I just think the greatest witness, you know, how do you have influence and impact? I, you know, I, I, I want people to see Jesus in me when I'm walking down the aisle of the grocery store. You know, right. mm-hmm. and uh, I just I, I, I want to be changed into his likeness to the point that that people can actually see Christ oozing out of me. You know? And the other verse you had was where it's used is uh, Second Corinthians 318. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory yeah. are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, right. which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Exactly. That was your other verse, okay. which was very powerful. Yeah. That idea. Yeah, it is. And I mean, because that. we think, well, you know, how, how different can I be? Well, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's there's evidence right there. That's exactly right. Yeah, well, that's a good point. <clears throat> I mean, you think about the 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 movie that is is Phil's journey to salvation, but the what happens the next fifty years is that transformative process exactly. that's pro, uh, that's so progressive, and it's I think a lot of people they want that one and done. You know that they oh. want they think that I come to Jesus and I'm done. But man, transformation is a it's a lifetime journey. You look back at 50, 40 really years, is. you know, you're like, man, I'm not even I don't even know who that guy was. You know what I mean? Right. But that's it, that, that's that's what I love about it. Uh, Schaefer called it substantial healing or sub, or substantial sanctification. But it's a yeah. it's the transformation that happens over a lifetime. Exactly. And, and and I mean that was the that was the theme kind of for this retreat was Acts four thirteen is that they these are they recognize these two guys as as common idiotes it says in the Latin Vulgate common idiots you know yeah. <laughs> un, ordinary uneducated men who had been with Jesus there was something about them that they could recognize as as Peter and John are speaking in that moment oh, I remember even when I was studying about coming to Jesus in my own life. I remember reading that verse mm-hmm. thinking, okay, there's yeah. a place for me here. I, I don't have to, because I never viewed myself as very smart. I'm just yeah. an ordinary guy. Idiose. But I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Idiote. It actually says Idiote. It, it does say that. Well, I've used <laughs> that. I was on a movie with Chris Anderson's movie, Bible Idiot, so I know what that means. <laughs> well, I've used that illustration yeah. many times about now in our co- current culture, Everybody has this, oh, you know, look into yourself yeah. and be what you want to be. And I, I actually uh, made that point in my speech Wednesday because I saw a big billboard that, that said that be who you want to be. Mm. It, it was some advertisement for whatever. Yeah. And uh, I heard an illustration that kind of changed my life on that is when you try to get your image or your identity in looking in yourself rather than what God thinks and yeah. getting your image there. When you think about it, the fault with that is, well, which version of yourself are you going to look into? Right. Because when I was 15, you know, I thought I knew everything. 
And then I, when, yeah. I, when I was 25, I looked back on my 15 year old self and thought, man, what an idiot. Mm. But then when I got 35, I looked back on my 25 year old self and thought, oh, I was just an idiot. <laughs> right. And then I'm, I'm getting progressively worse. When I got 45. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the same system. So I'm like, well, which person in myself am I supposed to get, go to? Cause what I've, I've pretty much figured out that at every point in my life up until now, I've pretty well been an idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? That's right. That's exactly so right. It, it is here. It is a, uh, it's not a, a road you want to go down. Yeah, I cool. wanted to pick up my favorite point, which is so interesting that, because you weren't in our podcast when we addressed Luke 9, but when we did the podcast on First and Second Peter, I was looking at the Greek word you you brought out metamorphosis. What is it? Metamorphosis or yeah, it's yeah. metamorpheo is the Greek. Um, well, when you made the point in Luke nine where when Jesus now here he is talking to Moses and Elijah, mm -hmm. who I don't know how many years ago they were on the earth, but it's been a while. It's been a long so the while. fact that you just have that statement, he's having a conversation. Mm -hmm. But you brought up the point, it says Jesus spoke, or they spoke about his departure, right. and you gave the Greek word for that. It's Exodus. Exodus. It's yeah. Exodus. Mm -hmm. Well, the only other place that's mentioned is in Second Peter, mm -hmm. and when Peter mentioned it, which you could, you didn't have time to go into this, obviously. <laughs> you referenced it. I only took 45. If I'd have took <laughs> yeah. an hour and five, I'd have got her. If you'd have got into yeah. this, you'd still be talking. <laughs> But when, so when Peter did, I love, I'll just, I, I think this is very powerful. Mm -hmm. When he was talking about uh, in chapter one and verse 13 of Second Peter, he said, I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, mm -hmm. because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus has made clear to me. And then in verse 15, he says, and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, mm -hmm. it's the same word. Same word, Exodus. Exodus. Yeah. You will always be able to remember these things. And then he talked about not following cleverly invented stories, mm -hmm. you know, when they told about this Lord is Jesus. His, his testimony of this event. That's and right. he goes mm -hmm. to the transfiguration. Yeah. Well, when you think about what the Exodus means, which I don't know why they don't just translate it Exodus, when you go back to Exodus, God's people, he he liberated them mm -hmm. from one condition, speaking of metamorphosis and transformation, and brought them out of bondage into a promised new land. And when you look at what Exodus really means in the Greek, it's not just departure, it it also is an arrival. It's freed mm -hmm. from something to something. Exactly. It's and a it's a journey. It's a it's a it's journey. Not, well, it's not a death. A death happens, you know, pretty quick. An exodus is a a departure. You know, as Jesus goes to the cross, and he's three days in the tomb, and he's raised, and then he's you know, yeah, all these resurrection appearances before the ascension. Forty more days. Yeah. That is. That's a, that's a journey. It's an exodus. That's where I was that's going. Look, so yeah. now as human beings, we, we, we f focus on the departure, the death, and not so much the arrival. Uh -huh. And it's both things. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, we're, you know, you think of that verse, we're liberated from the bondage of decay. Right. And so uh, it makes you view death in Jesus yeah. way more positive. It it's does. an exodus. It we're, we're, this is a process that we're going to go through, yeah. but it's well, just it's just as much about our arrival right. as because we have the Spirit of God into this imperishable, immortal state where we will spend way more time than we did on on the earth. Right, and so it's it's not something that we have to be depressed about. With Jesus, I really it think... was forty days, but. And back in the original Exodus, it was 40 years. Exactly. And this number of 40 is always kind of a time of preparation. Right. And that's yeah. the arrival you're talking about. But I think the Apostle Paul addresses this in one sentence. That process that we just described, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Exactly. Well, and so there, here's that there's journey, and there's the arrival right it, there. Exactly. Well, that's what he's given yeah. us a glimpse into. Uh -huh. With the transfiguration, the fact that you're having a conversation with two men that we thought were long gone, yeah, 
Well, that ought to tell you something right yeah. there. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with him. Whatever he's involved in right. to be able to have this conversation, that's something Which I, I that was. Uh, let's take him, our last break. That was, uh, Larry, one of the things, another point that I thought was say it was you talked about the two witnesses mm-hmm. and how that you need two or three witnesses. Right. So you're talking about Moses and Elijah being that witness of who Jesus is, but right. then the third witness became the father. Exactly. Here comes very that third. Powerful. And, yeah. and this is what Jesus said. If I testify about myself, it doesn't mean anything, but the father's testimony. Right. And so, you know, when, when, when God comes and, and just stops everything with the weight of his glory and they fall flat and he says, this is my son. Yeah. And it, it's like Peter gets interrupted mid-sentence. First he gets rebuked by Jesus for saying, no, not on my watch, you're not going to die. Right. Yeah. And then he gets rebuked by God the Father. You know, this guy's having a rough time here getting But you, you, you painted that picture right. really well about Peter, because we talked about that too when we went through this on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But is is in the, and Luke even says, you know, he didn't really know what he was saying. Right. I mean, it's just kind of like he was just trying his best, right. bless his heart. So, but the idea that he was trying to establish, he was saying, let's do this right now. Let's, let's eliminate. That the was pain. really good. Eliminate I the suffering. That. I mean, here we've got, you know, let's just build the, the, the tabernacles, law, the prophets, and Jesus, you know, right here, and it's just total religion for him. And it's like, what, you know, what what's stopping us? Why do we have to go die? And I mean. Peter's such a tenacious guy, and his theology is pretty yeah. hardwired. And uh, you know, he is he is a he's a defender. You know, he's a fighter, and I mean, he's the first guy. to I pull think that that's sword. why he mentions it in Second yeah. Peter is because it's almost a chance to go back and say, "Here's what I now recognize." You know, and I love that because how how often in our theology do we do we go and and look at something we think that we believe i always say be careful what you believe because your beliefs rule over you you don't really rule your beliefs it's like stop drop and roll you know the best time to think about what to do when you're on fire it's not when you're on fire it's before <laughs> right and and he's walking through this this theology and letting go of old beliefs man that's that transformation process right there yeah. it's it is like okay um i don't know everything it's like you just said you know when you're 15 or you're 25 when you're 35 and you look yeah. back and it's what you're doing is reevaluating of uh, what you believe we're in, we're in a battle over our minds we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind and if you can, if you believe something and you can't tell me why you believe it, it's probably dangerous for you to believe it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is a really good point. Well, you caused me to have a real interesting dream last night because oh, I did. yeah, really? I did. Okay, so I don't know. Should I share? It? I don't know. It's a little out there. We're all dead. Okay, and we're zombies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so here's what happened. I, I, and maybe it's because Zach keeps talking about this movie. So somewhere. <laughs> I, I'm just getting influenced. So I had a dream, and the fact that I remember it, I'm like, we need to have a movie about the zombie apocalypse because there's thousands of movies about zombie yeah. apocalypse. Right. But they're always, you know, their guts are hanging out, they're bloody, everybody's terrified. But this was like we were zombies. But we were showing the fruits of the spirit. Mm. It was like the opposite of ugly, evil. They're wanting to kill people. Right. So all the we're like all trying to help people and be kind. <laughs> wow. so we were it's, good zombies. This, it, it was good. Actually, zombies. you remember the a Christian band, rock band, Audio Adrenaline. You ever heard of them? You probably never. Anyway, no, but I've heard audio. But and they I wrote a adrenaline. song called <laughs> Zombie. Some kind yeah. of zombie, and this is the exact premise of that song: is that, and that's the well, visible now I got manifestation. A theme song. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's already done. So make your movie, and then call you audio this, A and the music. Maybe it, get Taylor Swift. We'll yeah, attach her to maybe it. cover, maybe cover <laughs> zombie. Yeah. But I was telling the producers <laughs> in the dream that movie that says uh, your body is dead because of sin. Uh, where, where's that at in Romans seven? Yeah, Phil? That you're alive. Uh, uh, yeah. Nice. Romans 8, 10. But if Christ is in you, mm-hmm. your body is dead because, because of, of sin, sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. I, yeah. I was telling the producers, so this is the concept. You know, mm-hmm. we're, as believers, we're zombies. I just, mm-hmm. I just read it. Right. But they were, it was just crickets. Yeah. I was like, we're going to make the movie 
we're all going to be dead, like the same. And you yeah. think, oh, here comes another zombie movie. Yeah. I said, but then they're you all. You have to walk like that when you're. Yeah, 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 you're walking around. You have to <laughs> hold the zombie. You but then, hold your hands like. But then yeah. cleverly, we're going to do good things and make the world a better place. So they're getting way. ready to shoot yeah. us in the head. And they're like, wait, wait, wait. They're like, well, no. Yeah. I mean, look, he's helping. Yeah. yeah. It, no, I used a, I used a, a scripture yesterday, and I can't pull it off uh, the location on the top of my head. But is that this transformation process that we we're talking about earlier? Paul says that those of us who live, who are alive in Christ, are continually being given over to death, yeah. yeah, so that His life will be made manifest in our mortal bodies, and that's that that that's zombie that idea. Yeah. Who yeah. is doing the giving over to death? Who do you think that is? We walk in the suffering of Christ, the fellowship of his suffering. Yeah. We're being formed into something. And, uh, and yeah. one thing that, that you spoke to me earlier about, we're talking about these mountaintop experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The mountaintop experience is not intended to teach us anything. It's intended to make us something. Mm-hmm. And the true test of our life in Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory, is not the ability to ascend that mountain. It's the ability to descend that mountain and come back down into that sinful, broken, fallen world and lift up. Yeah, the I, I wrote that Jesus. down because that's really what the gospel's all about. It is. That was the line of this. Yeah, that Jesus came down from the mountain. Top yeah, to, and right there in the next yeah. day. The next yeah. day they come down and there's the demon possessed boy. In yeah, like, so I wrote down a song, but since we're out of time, I have to <laughs> sing this in the overtime. So, a song. Yeah, if you want to hear this <laughs> song that I wrote down from that one statement you just made, okay. you'll have to come check it out in overtime. Uh, we'll have a little bit more with our friend LB, Larry Bowles, uh, in overtime. Larry, it's always great to have you on the podcast. Thank you. BlazeTV.com slash unashamed is where you go to find the overtime. So we'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.